Well, first of all, we should, we should bear in mind that we don't have a capitalist system. And no capitalist system has ever survived. It would self-destruct in five minutes. Uh, so what we have is a kind of state capitalist system with the state playing a substantial role in American history, a very substantial role in economic development, in production, in uh, research and development, uh, um, a lot of other bailouts, lots of other devices to keep uh, the private sector viable. So it's a kind of a state capitalist system uh, like others. Uh, they vary a little on how they do it. So is there an alternative to this? Of course. Uh, for example, the alternative that was uh, taken for granted by 19th century workers before it was sort of beaten out of people's heads by massive propaganda. Then you go back to the early Industrial Revolution, which was right around here, eastern Massachusetts. That was the period probably the freest press ever in the United States. There were lots and lots of newspapers uh, representing different ethnic groups, class you know, workers, uh, uh, all sorts of people. And they were, there was a lot of participation, direct participation, uh, uh, very lively press, widely read, and so on. Uh, and if you look at the working class press, uh, they were expressing the common view of working people, namely that uh, the fr those who work in the mills should own them and run them. Yeah, that's very natural. And as I say, we've come close to that a number of times, terrifying to private owners. Uh, they also held that uh, wage labor is basically no different from chattel slavery, except that it's temporary. And that was such a popular idea that it was a, it was a, a position of the Republican Party that Abraham Lincoln espoused it. And it makes sense. I mean, uh, there's nothing holy about wage labor. You are renting yourself which is not very different from being a slave, except that maybe it'll end sometime. Uh, okay, so those are alternatives. Uh, Self-management, uh, democratic control of uh, institutions, whether they're communities or workplaces or any others, uh, alliances among them, you know, federal arrangements. Uh, uh, these are all perfectly fe feasible alternatives. There's no uh, economic or political theory that tells us there's anything wrong with them. Uh, they conflict with the structure of existing power systems and therefore uh, the educational and cultural system tries to drive them out of your minds and make them seem you know, insane or crazy or unthinkable. But there's nothing unthinkable about them and uh, you can move towards realizing them. In fact, in, even in the United States, where you get no major discussion of these things. Now, there are probably thousands of uh, self-managed enterprises, not huge ones, but lots of them, and they're growing. And they could, as I mentioned, they could reach the scale of, uh, say, producing the uh, green technology, high-speed rail, and so on, that the country badly needs. It's not a law of nature that we have to import uh, solar technology from China. A, you know, a poor developing country, or that we have to get high-speed rail facilities from Spain. Those aren't laws of nature, those are political decisions, social, economic and political decisions. They can be made differently. If they're made differently enough, we'll be moving towards a, um, you know, kind of an anarchist-type society.